this guy trains a neural network model to classify images of clothing, like sneakers and shirts. It's okay if you don't understand all the details, this is a fast-paced overview of a complete TensorFlow program with the details explained as you go. This guide uses TF.Keras, a high-level API to build and train models in TensorFlow. This guide uses the FashionNIST dataset which contains 70,000 grayscale images in 10 categories. The images show individual articles of clothing at low resolution, 28 by 28 pixels, as seen here. FashionNIST is intended as a drop-in replacement for the classic NIST dataset, often used as the Hello! World of Machine Learning programs for computer vision. The NIST dataset contains images of handwritten digits 0, 1, 2, etc. in a format identical to that of the articles of clothing you'll use here. This guide uses Fashion NIST for variety and because it's a slightly more challenging problem than regular NIST. Both datasets are relatively small and are used to verify that an algorithm works as expected. They're good starting points to test and debug code. Here, 60,000 images are used to train the network and 10,000 images to evaluate how accurately the network learned to classify images. You can access the FashionNIST directly from TensorFlow. Import and load the FashionNIST data directly from TensorFlow. Loading the dataset returns four number py arrays. The train underscore images and train underscore labels arrays are the training set, the data the model uses to learn. The model is tested against the test set, the test underscore images, and test underscore labels arrays. The images are 28 by 28 number py arrays, with pixel values ranging from 0 to 255. The labels are an array of integers, ranging from 0 to 9. These correspond to the class of clothing the image represents. Each image is mapped to a single label. Since the class names are not included with the dataset, store them here to use later when plotting the images. Let's explore the format of the dataset before training the model. The following shows there are 60,000 images in the training set, with each image represented as 28 by 28 pixels. Likewise, there are 60,000 labels in the training set. Each label is an integer between 0 and 9. There are 10,000 images in the test set. Again, each image is represented as 28 by 28 pixels. And the test set contains 10,000 images labels. Preprocess the data. The data must be pre-processed before training the network. If you inspect the first image in the training set, you will see that the pixel values fall in the range of 0 to 255. Scale these values to a range of 0 to 1 before feeding them to the neural network model. To do so, divide the values by 255. It's important that the training set and the testing set be pre-processed in the same way. To verify that the data is in the correct format and that you're ready to build and train the network, let's display the first 25 images from the training set and display the class name below each image. Building the neural network requires configuring the layers of the model, then compiling the model. The basic building block of a neural network is the layer. Layers extract representations from the data fed into them. Hopefully, these representations are meaningful for the problem at hand. Most of deep learning consists of chaining together simple layers. Most layers, such as tf.keras.layers, dense, have parameters that are learned during training. The first layer in this network, tf.keras.layers, flatten, transforms the format of the images from a two-dimensional array of 28 by 28 pixels to a one-dimensional array of 28 times 28 is equal to 784 pixels. 
think of this layer as unstacking rows of pixels in the image and lining them up. This layer has no parameters to learn, it only reformats the data. After the pixels are flattened, the network consists of a sequence of two tf.caras.layers, dense layers. These are densely connected, or fully connected, neural layers. The first dense layer has 128 nodes, or neurons. The second, and last, layer returns a log its array with length of 10. Each node contains a score that indicates the current image belongs to one of the 10 classes. Before the model is ready for training, it needs a few more settings. These are added during the model's compile step. Loss function, this measures how accurate the model is during training. You want to minimize this function to steer the model in the right direction. Optimizer, this is how the model is updated based on the data it sees and its loss function. Metrics, used to monitor the training and testing steps. The following example uses accuracy, the fraction of the images that are correctly classified. Training the neural network model requires the following steps. Feed the training data to the model. In this example, the training data is in the train underscore images and train underscore labels arrays. The model learns to associate images and labels. You ask the model to make predictions about a test set, in this example, the test underscore images array. Verify that the predictions match the labels from the test underscore labels array. To start training, call the model.fit method, so called because it fits the model to the training data. As the model trains, the loss and accuracy metrics are displayed. This model reaches an accuracy of about 0.91, or 91%, on the training data. Next, compare how the model performs on the test dataset. It turns out that the accuracy on the test dataset is a little less than the accuracy on the training dataset. This gap between training accuracy and test accuracy represents overfitting. Overfitting happens when a machine learning model performs worse on new, previously unseen inputs than it does on the training data. An overfitted model memorizes the noise and details in the training data set to a point where it negatively impacts. With the model trained, you can use it to make predictions about some images. Attach a softmax layer to convert the model's linear outputs, logits, to probabilities, which should be easier to interpret. Here, the model has predicted the label for each image in the testing set. Let's take a look at the first prediction. A prediction is an array of 10 numbers. They represent the model's confidence that the image corresponds to each of the 10 different articles of clothing. You can see which label has the highest confidence value. So, the model is most confident that this image is an ankle boot, or class underscore names, 9. Examining the test label shows that this classification is correct. With the model trained, you can use it to make predictions about some images. Let's look at the 0th image, predictions, and prediction array. Correct prediction labels are blue and incorrect prediction labels are red. The number gives the percentage, out of 100, for the predicted label.